you've got smaller hands, you're gonna be like, yep, got, I know that, me neither, I can't, I have none. My God. One, two. Hey, hey, one, two. Bass dudes, bass dudettes, hopefully you all have a wicked day out there. I know I am having a beautiful day here in Leeds. Uh, today I want to talk about stretching on the fingerboard. I've been teaching bass now for almost 20 years and the amount of times I've been working with a student have said I can't really do that Scott because I haven't got big enough hands and I can't stretch and that's why you know I can't do it. I'm sure if you've got small hands out there you're nodding, you're going yes Scott that's me, I can't make them stretches. Well check in, well let me just sort of like just show you this video right now and then we're going to discuss it. Check this out. So as you can see, that guy's got tiny hands, he's like 13 or 14 years old, he actually might have been younger, and he's absolutely tearing it up, yeah? And he's got tiny hands, so what gives? How come there's so many people out there that are really struggling with moving around the fingerboard? Meanwhile, that little dude is tearing it up and there's fire coming off his fingerboard. The deal is that you need to shift really efficiently, okay? There's a common misconception that people play scales like this. Like, yes, I can, I've got pretty big hands, and if I really wanted to, I could play a major scale like that. But in reality, I'm not going to play it like that. I'm going to shift like that. Did you see that? Let me break that down for you, and then I'm going to get more in the details. Okay, and you're going to be able to leave this lesson, you're going to be thinking, holy crap, I can actually play those bigger lines, even though I've got small hands, right? So check this out. If I'm playing a major scale like this, as I go to that second fret, this, I'm not leaving this finger down here because it's crazy and it'll split my hand in two, okay? It's actually coming with me. See that? So I play that in, on the index finger, then I play that on the second finger here, that A, that A note there, and the, thing, the first finger actually just slides up with me. Okay, so check it out, it slides, then I play on the little finger, and then when I move back over here to the index finger, we're all good, because this hand, I'm not doing this. Okay, so check it out. Then all of this kind of falls under the hands as well when you're doing this. So generally, in general, I'm generalizing, most people will be able to get a four fret stretch. A four fret stretch. But even down here, it's quite, quite a way to stretch down here. But around this area, you're gonna be able to get a four fret four fret stretch. So if you're playing a G major scale like that, most people will be able to manage it. But even if you can't, even if you can't, you can still use this ninja shifting technique, okay? Which is where you are basically moving around more than you initially might think. Another great example of this is playing these four frets down here. So we've got an A flat, an A, a B flat, and a B are the first four frets of the G string here. Put your first finger on, play the second. When I move to the third finger, this finger here is not hanging around on this first fret. It's coming on the journey. It's coming this way. And then by the time I get there, we're golden, right? So you can play stuff like this. See how that first finger is actually moving along? Okay. This is something you need to practice. It's not something that you can be able to get immediately, but it's something that will probably take you a couple of weeks to dial in, okay? So obviously manage your expectations. If you play this in the next 20 minutes, you'll probably be like, Scott, this doesn't work. You are lying to me. But if you just take your time and just think, okay, I'm gonna try this out for the next few weeks, take a simple chromatic exercise like this, try and nail that over the next few weeks, great, you'll get that working. And then something like a major scale like this, again, give yourself a few weeks to get that index finger sliding along because where you are right now, it's probably glued. You probably hit that, that, the, uh, the index finger and the index finger's like, I'm staying here. 
<laughs> you know, just get into sliding that, sliding that index finger along. And then when you come to playing more complex lines, sort of like, it's going to be easy for you, easier for you, right? So if you look at me, I'm just going to sort of like improvise up and down the neck. You will see that at no point am I really going to be stretching crazy, okay? Even if I'm playing like lines like that. Again, that was just up a, a G major arpeggio. Okay. I'm doing a lot of shift in there. Check it out. See? Shift again. Okay, I'll, I'll improvise around the fingerboard. Let's see if I do any crazy stretches, okay? So. So as you can see there, I think the most stretchiness, stretch, I don't know, I don't know what the word is, right? The most stretchy I ever get was down here. And even for me, that is not the most comfortable thing to do, okay? So I should be trying to maybe shift a little bit better there instead of doing that finger per fret thing, one finger per fret thing and forcing it, right? I need to do a little bit, you know, of work in the shed to get that down. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this, especially if you've got smaller to medium sized hands, this will really help you out. And you know, just get your technique right. It is the fundamental foundational bit of everything we do. If our technique isn't right, everything else is gonna be shaky that we lay on top of it, okay? You need to get the foundations right. That said, if you want to study with me, I've just opened my Technique Accelerator program, which is 26 weeks long. You get to study with me. I will be your personal bass teacher for 26 weeks where you're gonna get a brand new video every single week focusing on one bit of your technique because technique isn't just sort of like good or bad technique. It is multiple parts. You need to break it up and work on them individually okay, individually to really see a big progression in your techniques. If you want to work with me for 26 weeks and join my Technique Accelerator program, that is a mouthful, click the link below this video. It will take you through so you can check out the entire thing and find out what it is all about. But essentially you get one brand new lesson ranging from 30 minutes to an hour long every single week, four specific exercises every single week, and it is based on around 20 minutes of practice per day, around five days a week. So if you've got 20 minutes to spare every single day and you wanna really see a big improvement in your technique over the next 26 weeks, check it out, links below, and uh, I'll see you on the inside. Now, as always, if you are subscribed to the channel, I love you. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe here on YouTube. Make sure you have your notifications switched on so next time we release one of these bad boys, you get notified about it. And obviously, check out what we're doing over at scottsbassessings.com as well. Thanks again. You've been awesome. Take it easy, Al. See you in the shed.